John Jagger Cates, a memorable character from General Hospital, made his first appearance in 1992. Portrayed initially by Antonio Sabato, Jr., Jagger was introduced as an orphan high school dropout who became involved in a failed robbery attempt at Kelly's Diner, which led to his first significant storyline involving a gunshot incident. His journey on the show included overcoming challenges such as threats from his past criminal associates and dealing with homelessness. Ruby, a character from the diner, and Bill Eckert played pivotal roles in helping him find his footing by providing him with employment and a place to live, respectively. Jagger's romantic life was notably complex. His relationship with Karen Wexler, a hospital volunteer, blossomed after a series of dramatic events, including a deserted island ordeal and Karen's struggles with a dark past. Despite initial complications, including a love triangle involving Brenda Barrett, Jagger and Karen eventually confessed their feelings for each other, leading to a passionate relationship. Their storyline took many turns, including Karen's work as a stripper and the couple's subsequent marriage and moved to Chicago for Karen's medical school. However, their marriage faced challenges, ultimately leading to a divorce after Jagger's infidelity was discovered. In 1997, Karen returned to Port Charles alone, revealing the couple's separation and Jagger's career as a police officer in San Francisco. The character of Karen was later killed off in 2003. Jagger made a brief return to Port Charles in 2008 on GH, Night Shift, although this stint was short-lived. As of February 2024, Jagger Cates made a surprise return to General Hospital, now portrayed by Adam Harrington. Details about the direction of his storyline or the duration of his return have not been disclosed, leaving fans curious about the future of this iconic character orphaned high school dropout John Jagger. Cates was introduced in 1992 when he and two of his in ear duel pals broke into Kelly's intending to rob it. One of the young men pulled a gun on Ruby and fired, but Jagger pushed Ruby out of harm's way, taking a bullet to the neck in the process. He recovered at General Hospital under Tony Jones's care. The PCPD threatened to arrest him if he didn't identify the other toughs who'd taken part in the incident at Kelly's. Meanwhile, his so-called friends threatened that he'd be dead meat if Jagger incriminated them. Desperate, Jagger tried to bust out of the hospital, and a beautiful young hospital volunteer, Karen Wexler, intercepted him. She helped him through his fear of heights on the hospital rooftop, depositing him safely back into his room. Jagger was released from the hospital, and he caught a lucky break when Ruby refused to testify against him. Meanwhile, the other young men were sent off to prison. Bill Eckert took pity on the homeless Jagger and hired him to work on the waterfront renovation, while Ruby agreed to let him live in the room above Kelly's. When Karen got a job there, the chemistry between her and Jagger was obvious, but Karen fought her growing feelings as she was dating Jason Cordemain. Jagger picked up extra cash tuning up the Cordemain's boat so that Jason could take Karen out on the water, but wound up hitting his head and losing consciousness. It was only after Jason and Karen had set sail that Jason discovered his potential romantic rival was on board. When a storm hit, the trip ended up stranded on a deserted island, which proved to be a bonding experience. While Jason and Karen's family stressed out over their whereabouts, Jason, Karen, and Jagger encountered ex-con Cal on the island. Jagger rushed to action to stop Cal, who was poised to rape Karen at the top of a cliff. Cal plummeted to his presumed death, and Jagger, Jason, and Karen made a pact never to discuss what had happened. The teens were rescued, but their woes had just begun, as a very much alive Cal blackmailed them, leading to a dramatic showdown where the cops captured Cal. That fall, Jagger enrolled at Port Charles High to continue his education, and classmate Brenda Barrett set her sights on him, even though she picked up on his pull to Karen. Jagger also began to long for the siblings, Mike and Gina, who he'd been separated from for many years. At year's end, he and Brenda started sleeping together. Early in 1993, Jagger gave Karen a ride on his motorcycle to a college interview. They wound up stranded in a snowstorm, leading them to come clean with one another about their true romantic feelings. She intended to break up with Jason to be with Jagger, but a jealous Brenda took secret snapshots of a nude Karen while she was showering in the girls' locker room and slipped the pictures into the boys' lockers. Her nasty prank devastated Karen, and when Jagger got into a fistfight defending Karen's honor, he was expelled. Jagger observed Jason comforting Karen and decided she was better off with Jason, so he cut things off with Karen in a note in Flood Town. But he soon realized his grave mistake and returned, showing up at her school Valentine's Day dance and declaring his love. Karen abandoned her date, Jason, and ran off with Jagger. With Karen's encouragement, Jagger tracked down his sister, Gina, and hired Felicia to investigate the whereabouts of his still-missing younger brother, Mike. 
Jagger also began boxing and was managed by Marco Dane. Meanwhile, Karen froze whenever she tried to be intimate with Jagger, and in time, she recovered long buried memories of being sexually abused by Roy, an ex boyfriend of her mother's. Karen began acting out and, too ashamed to share her secret with Jagger and feeling unworthy of his love, she broke up with him, leaving Jagger reeling. Karen secretly began working as a stripper at the club Sunny was running, the Paradise Lounge. Karen's new pal, Stone, who worked for Sunny, turned out to be none other than Mike, Jagger's brother. Stone moved in with Jagger, and when Jagger followed him to the club one day, he was shocked to discover Karen inside, stripping. When he returned later, he found her in bed with Sonny, who he promptly beat up. The mobster responded by putting a hit out on Jagger. Marco persuaded Sonny not to kill Jagger by giving him a share of Jagger's boxing winnings. When Karen's loved ones rallied around her and extracted her from the club, Sonny was livid and warned Marco that if Jagger didn't throw his next fight, Sonny would harm Karen. Jagger defied this order, though, and went on the run with Karen. There, she came clean with him about her childhood trauma and they made love for the first time. I in 1994, Jagger and Karen got engaged, and he decided to stop boxing and become a cop instead. Jaeger and Karen said, I do at Kelly's, and on their wedding day, Rhonda confessed to the bride that her biological father was Rhonda's boss, Scott Baldwin. Jagger and Karen then set out for a new life in Chicago, where Karen was slated to attend med school at Northwestern University. The following year, the couple visited Port Charles at Stone's request. Jagger was heartbroken to learn that his little brother had AIDS. Jagger and Karen returned to Chicago, and Stone passed away not long thereafter. I in 1997, on Port Charles, Karen returned to town solo to intern at GH, leaving Jagger behind in San Francisco, where he was a police officer. In time, she admitted that her marriage was struggling. Karen went to visit her hubby and found him with another woman, Fran. When she went back to Port Charles, Jagger wrote her a letter apologizing for becoming distant and copying to have an affair with Fran. The duo agreed to divorce and the dissolution of their marriage was finalized by year's end. Sadly, Karen was killed in 2003. In 2008, Jagger resurfaced in Port Charles on the second season of GH, Night Shift. Now an FBI agent, Jagger was a single dad to a son, Stone, named after his late brother. Robin suspected that Stone was on the autism spectrum and advised Jagger to have him tested. Stone was diagnosed with autism. Jagger subsequently went back to San Francisco with the boy.